Hello everybody, this is Gamergar and welcome back to another video of Stardew Valley. For the purposes of today's video, I'm going to showcase 11 great tips that you can utilize to enhance the way you play the game. The first tip we're going to talk about today is the forageables that you can get on the beach here. So the first thing that you'll notice when you get to this beach is that there's a broken bridge on the right hand side and you need 300 wood to fix this bridge. My advice to you is to fix that bridge as quickly as possible because it means you're going to get access to the second portion of the beach and that means you're going to get access to a lot more forageables. But that's only half the tip. Did you know that the beach, the forageables it generates on a daily basis, do not disappear the following day? That means the beach can accumulate forageables all the way up until Saturday night. They will reset on Sunday. So if you're really busy on your farm and you don't have a whole lot of time to go down to the beach and get the forageables every day, then don't worry about it. You can wait until Saturday and then come down to the beach and get all the forageables in one fell swoop. And this is really handy, especially if you want to make that extra bit of profit by the end of the week, or if you have some community center bundles you want to complete, or if you want to use these forageables to get skills up in foraging, or just use them for recipes. The beach has loads of forageables that it will generate on a daily basis for you. So that is basically the first tip. The second tip that I'm going to share with you today is the art of modifying what gift you get from the NPCs around Stardew Valley. So as you can see here, I'm very good friends with Pam. She found this in a drawer somewhere. Thanks very much, Pam. <laughs> it's, it's a beer. And I'm actually quite surprised that Pam is actually giving me alcohol. I thought she'd actually drink it herself. But hey, that's what friends are for. But let's just say I didn't want a beer. Let's just say I wanted a more lucrative gift that Pam can give, maybe an energy tonic. All you have to do is reset your day and the game will use a random number generator and it will change the gift that you get. Now it might take a few attempts because you might get the bear two or three times in a row, but if you keep at it, eventually you will get a different gift. So as we can see here now, Pam found a different item in her jar this time. She found an energy tonic, which is much better than a bear. It also sells for a much greater price. And it, can also, it also gives you a much better uh, healing. You know, 500 energy, 225 health. That That is why it's always worth making, you know, good friends with Pam. Because she gives energy tactics. The next tip we're going to talk about here is the transitioning between summer and fall. As we can see here now, I have a farm filled up to the top with melons. And I got really lucky as well this season. I got mutated melons. So what's going to happen here now is I'm going to harvest all these melons, but it's the 25th. That means by the time, you know, I'm going to plant new crops, it's going to be the first of fall, and most of this ground will have to be re -hoed. But did you know that there's a crop you can get in summer that will also survive in fall, and that is wheat. So what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to purchase loads of wheat, and I'm going to plant it. Wheat takes four days to grow, but if you use speed grow, you can actually grow in three days. And this means I won't have to re my whole farm because the wheat will grow by the first of fall. So not only does it net me a really nice profit, but it also saves me from re the ground. The next tip we're going to talk about here is how skidding up can save you time and energy. As we can see here, I'm after getting a skid up in mining. I'm level 2 now in mining, but the game hasn't registered that yet because it can't make staircases. But what this means for me is that if I exhaust myself today, or if I pass out, if I die inside a cave, I will not take a penalty to my energy the next day because I obtained a skill up. And this doesn't just apply for mining. This applies for all your skills in the game. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to mine all these ores and I'm going to pass out on purpose just to show you that even with an exhaustion debuff uh, and even with, you know, the purposes of passing out, I will not take a penalty to my energy the next day because I got a skill up. This can be a very powerful tip because it means you don't have to worry about an energy debuff the next day. So you can still go, you know, full hog and whatever you have to do in your farm the next day. So it's day two here now in fall. Let's wake up and see what our energy is like. As you can see, full energy. The exhaustion debuff from the previous day didn't hinder me at all. The next tip we're going to talk about is the art of cutting down trees. 
So in terms of cutting down trees, the best advice I can give you is to never get rid of the tree stumps unless, of course, you're decorating your farm and you just don't want the tree stumps there. There are several reasons for this. The first reason is that the tree stumps can grow back into full trees again, meaning you can cut down the trees again for loads of wood because the tree stumps don't give a whole lot of wood. They also don't give a whole lot of experience. And secondly, even though trees get reduced to tree stumps, they will still generate seeds around them. And this means you can still harvest lots more seeds to expand your lovely tree forest. So that is the second reason why you shouldn't cut down the tree stumps. Because wood is something that you always need in Stardew Valley. Because, you know, especially if you want to make buildings, wood is, a, wood is an item that's always needed from early game straight up to end game. The next tip we're going to showcase here is bed placement. Did you know you can move your bed? I didn't know for a very long time you can move your bed. <laughs> uh, this is especially helpful if it's really late at night and you're rushed, you know, you're rushing back to your house to get into bed so you don't take that energy penalty. Moving the bed to your door uh, will save you a lot of pain. The next tip I'm gonna to talk to you about is how to get past this goblin very quickly. So this goblin won't let you get past him unless you give him a void mayonnaise. Did you know you can fish up a void mayonnaise from the waters here? Now you can only get one. So once you fish this up, you can't fish up anymore. But you just have to give him the void mayonnaise right there and then, and he'll be very impressed with you. He'll run back into the house, allowing you to get the lovely magic ink for the wizard. And that means you can access the lovely wizard's utilities, such as advanced buildings, Judama huts, and building placement. Next up, I'm gonna showcase a real good tip here you can do with the copper pen. Once you complete all the fish tank bundles, the boulder just to the left of the, the mines there will open up, and Willie will give you a copper pen that you can use to, you know, to pan around Stardew Valley. Did you know you can put the copper pen on your head and use it as a helmet? <laughs> I didn't know this until recently. This is a magnificent way to save on an inventory slot, but at the same time, you'll always have it with you if you come across a panning point. The next tip I'm going to share with you today is the art of building silos. Once a silo has been built on your farm, you can then go ahead and you can convert your lovely grass into hay. So you should always save all the grass that you have and cut it down once you have your silo made. That way you can stack up on loads of hay very early in the game, especially if you make a silo very early in the game. It's also worth noting as well that if you leave just a little bit of grass left, don't harvest at all, that grass will generate more grass around it. And within a season or two, you'll have a farm filled up with grass again. This is a great way to, to prevent yourself from going down to Marnie and paying huge amounts of money for hay. The next tip we're going to talk about is the art of wild seeds. Now, as your foraging level increases, you will unlock more recipes for wild seeds. We're in fall at the moment, so we need a common mushroom, a wild plum, a hazelnut, and a blackberry to make 10 wild seeds for this season. You can also make spring wild seeds, you can make summer wild seeds, you can even make winter wild seeds, believe it or not. And the reason why this tip is so overpowered is because you can not only can you increase your foraging level by a lot using this method you can also make really nice profits as well and if you don't want to sell the forage builds you can just use them for healing so what all you do is basically any forage builds you get don't sell them or eat them convert them into wild seeds and plant them and grow them once those wild seeds have, have grown up into fully matured forage builds, you just have to rinse and repeat. So what you're doing here is you're gonna come out with more and more wild seeds every single time you do this. And if you keep it up throughout the whole season, at the very end, you'll find yourself with, with, with hundreds of wild seeds or even hundreds of forage bills. You decide whether to convert them back into wild seeds and sell them for the profit or just keep all the forage bills that you have and eat them for healing or, you know, gift them to people. The next tip I'm going to share with you today is to build cabins. Now, generally speaking, people only make cabins if they want to open up the game for cooperative play. But if you don't want to play the game cooperatively, you can still make these cabins um, and use them as sheds. So I just built a cabin there. And the great thing about it is that Robin will build this immediately for you. And they're also dirt cheap. It's only 100 gold, 10 stone to build this one. And as you can see, it, it's the exact same of, of a starter tier house. Now you can't move the seeds. If you want to get rid of the seeds, you have to bring in a player. And you can't move the bed. But you can move everything else. And you can use this as a little storage shed. 
So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to build a regular shed and I'm going to show you the difference between a cabin and a regular shed. As we can see, there isn't much of a difference. The shed is a little bit bigger, but it's a lot more expensive to make and it requires a lot more resources. So if you're starting out and you're looking for storage space, you can make up to three cabins. My advice to you is to start off with three cabins before making sheds, because this way you're going to save an awful lot of money and time. So that is all the tips I have for you today. I'm going to leave the video there. I hope you enjoyed it. As per usual, I'll upload the next Stardew Valley video in the next day or two, so stay tuned for that. Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays is when I upload Stardew Valley content. My subscriber base has grown dramatically in the past few days, so I also want to say I really appreciate your support. Thanks so much for subscribing, and I hope you enjoy my content. Bye for now. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to be notified for my future videos. And as always, have a great day.